My research program is uh, mainly concerned with advanced uh, weather radar techniques for uh, remote sensing of precipitation and severe storms, especially flash flood producing storms or tornadic supercell storms which cause a lot of damage and, and a lot of uh, property damage in the U.S., uh, especially severe hailstorms. Um, and the kind of uh, techniques we're using, uh, I participated in the development of that about 20 years ago, uh, or actually 25 years ago, and it involves very simple uh, uh, radar techniques um, using what we call the polarization state of the electromagnetic wave and uh, the electromagnetic wave has kind of two states of polarization what's called horizontal and vertical polarization just like you use polarized sunglasses for example and uh, this enables us to actually look at the shape of particles in the thunderstorm it looks at how the particles are oriented whether they're tumbling for example hail is tumbling and so on and we can detect that kind of uh, phenomena and actually we can measure the uh, rainfall rate actually very accurately with uh, using these kinds of advanced radar techniques much more accurately than we can do with conventional techniques so that's the whole basis after 20 years of research now the national weather service is uh, upgrading the uh, what they call the next rad or the next generation weather radar what they call super doppler or on tv doppler radar on tv uh, they're upgrading this for this new dual polarization uh, measurement concept um, and I think by another three to uh, six years, uh, about 150 network of Doppler radars in the U.S., these are each costing about $3 million a piece, uh, will be upgraded at practically a million dollars a piece for this kind of new technology that, that we have been working with for 25 years here. And the CSU chill radar that you see behind me um, has been one of the research test beds for developing all these advanced concepts. And now we'll move from um, just concept testing to actual operational applications. And that's a very, very big step. In fact, now even uh, some TV stations are purchasing uh, this kind of technology, dual polarized radar technology for their audience, for their viewers, uh, to get more insight into, into rainfall producing storms and so on, flash flood. And for hydrology, it is a very big impact for forecasting for hydrological aspects. For example, our Fort Collins a flash flood storm that happened in 1997. The conventional techniques underestimated the rainfall accumulation by a factor of two. And so that meant whether Spring Creek was flooded or not flooded, uh, not causing a, a one in 200 year event or not. And that, that particular event turned out to be very unique in terms of the microphysics of the, of the rainfall that was producing was so unusual for Colorado for that one particular event, so different from what happens in normal summertime Colorado convective storms that sometimes you can make a factor of two and factor of three underestimated rainfall amounts and that can be a big difference for hydrological models. So this advanced technology can actually improve that accuracy to within 20% instead of factors of two and three. Now we're talking about 20%. So that's a very big improvement. And uh, the National Weather Service is actually using this technology for operational applications because of this accuracy that we have worked with for uh, 20 years and we continue to work with students uh, to make this to perfect this technology and to get all the algorithms going there'll be at least a five-year period of algorithm development and testing for the national weather service so we hope to participate in that radar is used actually in a lot of aspects from automobile radars to aircraft based weather radars to uh, the federal aviation administration uses doppler radars routinely uh, and so and the national weather service and the defense establishment so there's a and and there's a lot of research labs which are using radars of all kinds to detect uh, objects under the surface. Uh, the defense is using it for uh, anti-aircraft radar. I mean, so radar is, the defense is proliferated with radar technology. And so there's a lot of opportunity for, uh, for future work uh, opportunities, I think.